Hi, my name is Leon Roque, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's Forex weekly analysis for the week starting the 18th of December. And this will be the last uh, weekly video for the year. I will put out some uh, content uh, during uh, the next uh, couple of weeks, but you know, for just the uh, weekly analysis, uh, there's going to be nothing until 2024. I do wish you all a Merry Christmas if you're celebrating and uh, happy holidays. Um, and I uh, hope you have a great one and a great 2024. Anyways, now getting into the uh, the week ahead and looking at the uh, United States, November's personal income and outlays report, notably featuring the closely observed PCE price index will take center stage along with the final reading of the Q3 GDP growth, uh, CB consumer confidence and durable goods orders. The housing sector will be under scrutiny as investors closely monitor key indicators including building permits, housing starts and existing and new home sales. That all kind of contributes to you know gross domestic products and shifting attention uh, internationally the United Kingdom will report on inflation and retail sales, while Japan's focus will be on the Bank of Japan interest rate decision, interest rates and foreign trade data. That is very important. Um, we'll get into that as we get into the uh, weekly analysis. In Germany, eyes will turn to the LFO Business Climate Index, GFK, Consumer Confidence and Producer uh, inflation figures and Canada is set to unveil inflation rates for November's GDP growth rate. And so, um, yeah, this week is probably likely to be a bit of a quiet week, although there is news uh, coming out and data coming out. But pretty much uh, the market is likely to be maybe a bit uh, muted as uh, volume starts to dry up. So getting into the weekly analysis and really starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index just a measure of strength really on, on the dollar um, against the uh, the major currencies and so um, looking at where uh, the dollar is technically probably looking at that area there um, in terms of uh, demand for the, uh, the dollar and zooming out a bit you look at the uh, the yearly high and yearly low uh, we're down into really uh, beyond what I would call fair value 50% is fair value um, and so we're coming down into potentially a bargain area how do you know if this is a bargain this is where you start to look at the fundamentals and really the fundamentals are saying um, according to this Bloomberg article let me just uh, scroll up that the Fed prepares to shift to break cuts in 2024 as inflation eases and so the Federal Reserve pivoted uh, towards reversing the steepest interest rate hikes in a generation after containing uh, an inflation surge so far without a recession or significant cost to employment. And so updatedly, updated quarterly forecast showed the Fed officials expect to lower rates by 75 basis points next year, a sharper pace of cuts that indicate indicated that than indicated in September, sorry, while the median expectation for the federal funds rate at the end of 2024 was 4.6. Individuals' expectations uh, varied wildly and uh, the federal funds futures markets are now pricing in six rate cuts for next year, up from four earlier this week as traders have fully priced in a rate cut in the Fed's March meeting. So, um, what does that all pretty much mean? Uh, Forex is really driven by interest rates and that's a really a main driver. It's not the only driver, but it's the main driver. And so the more, uh, uh, I guess, central banks uh, price in and the market prices in uh, rate cuts or rate uh, hikes is what you'll see is uh, that will be reflected on the price chart in currency appreciation or devaluation. So cuts will really mean devaluation and hikes will mean appreciation. And so you see in this move right here, this was uh, due to rate, uh, rate hikes. And now you're seeing the expectation of rate cuts uh, being priced into uh, the market. It's never usually a straight line. Uh, of course, this one uh, seemed like it, but um, typically you do have higher lows and higher highs, lower highs, lower lows. Now, um, 
the dollar, I do think that although economically the dollar is uh, one of the strongest currencies, I think mainly they are going to be one of the first to continue cutting and cutting big. And it's really due to the election cycle. I was talking about this with the guys in the private mentoring group um, that although, you know, fundamentally you would really kind of understand that there are other currencies that are in a worse worse uh, economic situation that should really they should really be cutting first but the um it's an election near year next year and so rate cuts uh they pretty much help with uh, uh with, with, with joe biden right in terms of um you know, putting money in people's pockets, uh, boosting the economy, and so uh, I think that the uh, that the dollar will uh, cut rates and be one of the uh, first central banks uh, to cut rates, and that's really the narrative uh, going on at the moment. And I'm going to run with it. So uh, for me, uh, the dollar, although not an all-out sell against all currencies, I do think is likely to be a, uh, a sell going into uh, 2024. And so if we look for pullbacks, or if I'm looking for pullbacks anyway, into uh, any kind of daily supply zones, uh, that is really where I'm looking at uh, some sells. Of course, you're not necessarily, or I'm not looking to trade the uh, US dollar index, uh, but this is just a confluence and uh, understanding where we are in terms of lower highs and lower lows. We know that this was a uh, an expensive area for the dollar because it made new lows. So if you do pull back anywhere around this area, I think that's gonna be quite nice for a, uh, a sell trade. There are reasons to buy the dollar as well. As I said, the dollar you can, um, although you wouldn't typically uh, sell the dollar under these situations, I just think that because it's an election year and the market is pricing in, are gonna be pricing in more cuts in the Fed. Um, a pricing in cuts as well. I think the dollar is likely to be more of a sell uh, than a buy. And that's really the narrative that I'm going with. Looking at the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen, um, the yen is looking like a buy. And this is really due to the fact that they are the only uh, central bank who were looking to high crates uh, in 2024. So looking at the Japanese yen, the uh, big currency flop of 2023 is top pick for year ahead again. So um, basically it was three straight years of outsized declines in the yen look set to end in 2024. And that's the view of market participants polled by Bloomberg who on balance see the currency rallying next year as the Bank of Japan exits the world's last negative interest rate regime and its global peers cut borrowing costs. So while the rest of the, you know, the, the major central banks are cutting uh, interest rates, they are going to be hiking interest rates. And so it says here, the situation won't disappoint the end bulls on this occasion, as said uh, Shoki Omori. Uh, a strategist at Mizuho Securities Co. in Tokyo, who sees the prolonged slump in the currency coming to an end, there's a sorry, there's a lot of room for the Bank of Japan to tighten policy, but they do seem determined. Sorry, there's not a lot of room for the Bank of Japan to tighten policy, but they do see, seem determined to rip up negative interest rates. And so, I think this is going to be one of the trades for uh, 2024. Also, if of course. Uh, that does come to fruition in terms of the uh, Bank of Japan looking to uh, to uh, uh, high crates. So I think any pullbacks against pretty much all currencies um, are going to be nice uh, buying opportunities for the yen. Meaning that if it's the quote currency, you're looking at uh, um, uh, uh, short trades. So that's where really I am in terms of uh, my bias. Um, the dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss again, looking at this and zooming out over the year, year to date, uh, we are really down into these, uh, you know, from yearly highs to yearly lows. And so we are at these, uh, these lows right here. Could this uh, be a potential buy? I don't, again, I don't think that the, the dollar is uh, terrible, but in based off of just interest rate leading and lagging in terms of who's leading the interest rate uh, uh, cut um, 
narrative. It looks like you're probably looking at uh, some more short trades. So looking at uh, supply from here, zooming in a bit and waiting for maybe some pullbacks into uh, this area here, or you've got a, a supply zone that is about there. So you could look for any pullbacks up into that area there. So um, decent short trades. Um, if you're looking at shorts and buying the Swiss franc over the uh, US dollar, if you're looking to buy the US dollar, uh, then you are, you know, looking for pullbacks into this demand zone before looking at the uh, any kind of buy trades. And that's not to say that the uh, dollar is going to fall off a cliff and go, you know, way beyond. But um, there will be buying opportunities to buy the dollar. Uh, but again, um, I think from a interest rate perspective, it looks like the dollar uh, with cutting rates uh, should actually look to uh, fall into next year. Um, dollar CAD pretty much similar across the board. The CAD, uh, I don't uh, necessarily like the CAD in terms of uh, current fundamentals, but um, I think they're probably like neck and neck with the dollar in terms of uh, cutting rates. So, um, yeah, I think uh, this, this is probably a bit more of a trickier uh, trade at the moment. But if you are looking to buy, I think right now is a decent area to look for buy trades. We pretty much saw in the past that we've had, you know, this area was seen as a bargain price that may lead to new higher highs. So we can see that potentially happening now. Or if we're looking at, for example, yearly highs and yearly lows, really, the yearly low would be somewhere down at these 131s, between 13250 and 131s. But, um, uh, if you are looking for short trades, meaning you're buying the Canadian dollar, then you're looking at the uh, supply zones. And so, yeah, any pullbacks into supply at decent areas to look for uh, some short trades. Um, looking at the pound dollar, and the pound uh, did have actually some decent news. Uh, recently, UK companies report strongest growth in six months, S&P says. And so uh, British companies saw the strongest rebound in, in, in output in six months, reflecting more stable borrowing costs and higher demand for services, a survey of purchasing manager uh, showed. And so that is uh, positive for the um, uh, for, for GDP, although they did have uh, some GDP news that came out that was uh, not great. Um, it was a month for month, I think it was. And so the, the, I think the UK economy is expected to um, to uh, to kind of flatline and stagnate. But um, yeah, with the dollar looking at cutting rates uh, sooner than the British pound, uh, you're likely to probably see any moves down to you know demand zones as uh, potential buy trades, and so um, this is probably where the next uh, demand zone is. And then you've got one just below here. So any pullbacks into these zones, I think, are decent buying opportunities if you're looking to sell the uh, the dollar. Um, and again, if, as the dollar devalues, just um, uh, but, Naturally, you're going to get the uh, the pound uh, moving uh, higher, or you should get the pound moving higher, barring some uh, economic catastrophe. And then, if the market starts to reprice the uh, interest rates for the pound moving um, moving forward in terms of closer, then in fact the pound will actually start to get weaker. But I do think that currently, with all the data that we know, um, the the, uh, the dollar looks like it's still likely to uh, devalue for a little bit. Uh, the pound yen, and again, uh, the yen I think should be the currency uh, to buy for 2024, as they are the only uh, currency and central bank that are looking to high crates. And so where we sit at the moment, in terms of uh, supply and demand, I think I'll just draw a bit of a demand zone right there. I think any pullbacks into uh, this supply zone up top and this high, this high, lower high, I think is going to be really nice for a short trade as we head into, uh, like I said, 2024, or we're looking at a 
buy trade right around here um, especially down into these 177 lows again it really just depends on whether um, the data does support the buying of uh, of the yen so let's see if the data can support the uh, the rate uh, potential rate hikes looking at the euro dollar and the euro dollar um, I'm going to go over a losing trade that I had um, last week and um, for anyone uh, that uh, sticks around. I'll do it at the end of this uh, at this video. And uh, one winner, one loser. I lost a trade on the um, on the euro dollar, um, an interesting one. And then I am profitable on a uh, New Zealand CAD trade, which is going uh, okay at the moment. So looking at uh, where we are from a euro dollar perspective, um, we have come up into this uh, supply zone here, bounced off it twice or once and then twice again. Um, again, I'm not, I hesitate to really want to buy the euro um, simply because although the dollar is, you know, doing um, is is looking to cut rates, I do think that it's neck and neck when it comes to um, when they're likely to cut rates. And so I do think that there's reasons to buy and there's also reasons to sell the um, the uh, the uh, euro. Uh, the 110 seems to be or just thereabouts is likely to be the uh, the ceiling um, for the uh, the euro dollar, I think, uh, at least in the short term. Um, unless again there is some major news and improvements for the euro or there is deteriorating news uh, and data for the US that's where you're likely to see prices break out of uh, this uh, 110 to 107.50 or 107.20 um, uh, auction or uh, what is commonly known as a, uh, a range and um, looking at the fundamentals with the latest really kind of uh, uh, statements from Christine Lagarde and the ECB and it says that ECB holds rates with inflation sinking but hastens bond exits so um, you know the ECB uh, sees weaker economy denting inflation and the risks to economic growth remain tilted to the downside Christine Lagarde told reporters on um, Thursday in Frankfurt though she suggested that dangers for prices are more balanced I mean they talk about prices talking about inflation Growth could be lower if the effects of monetary policy turn out stronger than expected, she warned. So if, if, if interest rates are too high and uh, high interest rates do contract the economy because they make borrowing and lending costs higher, which affects businesses and, um, and uh, consumers, right? So it says here, traders pulled back bets on ECB rate cuts next year, now seeing 155 uh, basis points of 165 basis points of easing compared to about 160 basis points earlier in the session. So um, again, traders uh, slightly readjusting uh, their rate cut expectations only just um, not by much and markets are pricing in an ECB cut as soon as March though Lagarde uh, has said no moves should be expected in the next couple of quarters. So let's see whether um, the market is right or she's right. So um, I think if she's right and there are no uh, uh, rate cuts uh, by March, then you're likely to see the uh, the euro actually continue to move uh, higher, the euro dollar. So let's see what happens there. But for now, I think uh, there are reasons to buy and reasons to sell the euro dollar, although I don't like the euro in terms of uh, nothing personal, but just from a, uh, a data, looking at the data perspective, um, I wouldn't put my money on the euro. Euro yen, this could be a really nice trade um, into 2024. I think the euro should decline and the, uh, the yen should be the one to buy again just if the data does support the uh, the yen buying and uh, the Bank of Japan looking to uh, high rates this year so we've got a nice um, supply zone so any pullbacks up into the 157 15768 uh, area I think is going to be decent for a short I think anything above there I think it would have to prices would have to kind of create a level before looking at going short but that's really where my bias is. If you are looking to buy the uh, the euro, then um, really down into this demand zone where we are is probably where you're looking to potentially uh, buy the euro 
pound and the euro pound i think the pound has the edge on the euro at the moment so i think the par fellies resistance is still to the downside although we've pulled back up into this uh, this high this might be decent on a lower time frame uh, to look for uh, some short trades but from a supply zone perspective daily supply zone doesn't look like much you do have a level of uh, support and resistance right here which it looks like price is reacting from um, but let's see I think if uh, many of the guys may, may know this the stop hunt setup that we use I think this level here is a decent stop hunt the one uh, sorry the 0 0.86352 area could be nice for a uh, for a stop hunt but if you are looking for buy trades on the euro uh, pound looking to buy the uh, the pound sorry buy the euro against the uh, the pound then you're looking at really a pullback probably down into uh, actually let's see yeah maybe pull back down into these levels here before looking at getting short from a daily supply zone looking at buying the pound and you're really waiting for price to come back to the 0 0.87 area which i don't know whether that will happen anytime soon uh euro swiss um as a result of a weak uh, euro the swiss franc uh, typically does um, strengthen also as well the Swiss franc uh, seen at the moment as maybe one of the last central banks to uh, cut rates um, again there's a bit of mixed data around that but if that does turn out to be true in terms of the euro do end up cutting rates uh, sooner than the uh, Swiss franc and the Swiss National Bank then again, you're likely to see prices continue to uh, to fall. One thing to just be aware of, though, is that we are at uh, multi-year lows. I think if you're looking at all of the data, prices haven't been this low since um, since September 2022. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Actually, we still got a little bit of ways to go from uh, 2015. I uh, remember that day as well when the Swiss National Bank decoupled from the euro. Uh, which send the sent the euro down something like two thousand pips or something like that in a day um so this is we're going to be really the absolute low um still ways to go but if you are looking to short just be mindful that um you know you are shorting kind of into lows you're really waiting for maybe a pullback up into an area maybe one of these uh highs here before looking at getting short the Australian dollar, US dollar. Now the Aussie is again one of my uh, uh, top picks as well for next year. So um, I, I am looking to buy uh, the um, the Australian dollar against various other currencies. So my bias is really to look for any pullbacks into uh, demand. That was uh, um, a nice trade that had pulled back into a. Um, an area here all right so that was really nice uh, last a uh, couple of weeks ago move uh, higher if you are looking to short the uh, the Australian dollar US dollar you've got quite a wide zone of supply here and when you get a wide zone of supply then what you do you just break that down and you, one of the things you can use is uh, an area of uh, support and resistance within that area of supply. And so if prices do come back up to either there or you've got a little one here as well, um, that could be decent in terms of uh, looking at you know short trades. But my bias would be if the, uh, the Federal Reserve are looking to cut rates first, then um, that should uh, keep the uh, the dollar us dollar weak against the australian dollar and any pullbacks are probably looking at buying opportunities australian yen again if the uh, bank of japan are the uh, only central bank next year to uh, high rates, then you would expect really the uh, the yen to strengthen to some degree either there or there um Again, it really does depend upon the uh, what the central bank uh, say as well as the data. But you know, the market is trying to get ahead and anticipate that you know this is basically going to be uh, happening in 2024. So I do think any moves to the downside uh, pullbacks are going to be nice uh, shorting opportunities in anticipation of that. And finally, looking at 
gold and so gold should be the uh the buy going into 2024 um one of the one of the things about gold that um may keep it capped is the fact that if the us kind of avoid a recession right so if they avoid a recession then gold um may not be necessarily the the all out buy um because although gold is a uh, it is a, uh, a flight to quality in terms of um, a safe haven asset safe haven meaning that in a recession or when there's risk uncertainty and and uh, fear that the that gold will you know mark the market will tend to flood into gold but um if that doesn't happen then um gold may be capped to the upside but if the dollar does continue to devalue just purely as a you know um uh it, as the, as gold obviously works uh, opposite to in, uh, inversely correlated or yeah inversely correlated to gold then you should have uh gold go higher as the dollar you know devalues so that's really the uh, the idea so i think any pullbacks into uh demand zone or demand zones should be really the uh, the path at least resistance to uh to the upside so that's really where we are uh going into 2024 now uh getting into uh one winner one loser and looking at the euro dollar so looking at the euro dollar and uh, it was a trade that i took on the uh friday the 8th of december and um typically i don't uh, take trades at lows in terms of i don't sell at lows and buy at highs um first time i've done it in years and really the main reason why i did so was because on that day, the uh, non-farm payrolls had come out way better than expected and our employment rate came down lower than expected. And so typically that is and that is actually, you know, really good news in terms of um, the uh, the understanding that a better than expected economy is uh, should push back interest rate uh, cuts. Right. And so what we did see is a bit of a sell off. Right, and I didn't get involved in the sell-off, and then we got a pullback. Yeah, we got pullback into uh, this area here about an hour later, or so. That's me about an hour and a half later. So I considered that this is probably likely just taking out a lot of traders who had gone short based on the data. So when prices came back up to uh, the one seven, was it one seventies and one oh seven seven, which is yeah, which is around here. Um, I decided to get into a short with a 20 pip stop with the anticipation that price is likely just stopping out traders who went uh, went short on the data. Right, and we had even more positive data. Michigan consumer sentiment came out much higher than expected, uh, and uh, you know prices should uh, continue to the downside. Now, again, it's not 100% guaranteed or anything like that, um, but that was really the. Uh, the thinking and the process behind it now typically as well what i do is i get myself to break even by when i get to a one-to-one -one position i take off half and then i'm looking for uh just to basically run the rest so that if i'm taking off half at a one-to-one -one, i've only got a half a position in and uh, if prices uh, stop me out then i'm pretty much at break even but i was you know i had a bit of strong conviction that the um the dollar should roll over but unfortunately and i didn't actually get myself to break even and uh, paid the price by a losing trade uh so prices did come back up um and and stop me out on the tuesday the uh, 12th of uh, december so uh that was a small loss by the way i didn't you know put in any kind of uh full position i was already in um, a couple of other trades and so i just didn't want to uh, put too much in so it was a small loss but a loss never the less so again the lesson in this really is don't sell at lows and again there's so there's so many times where you see you know breakouts of levels and they do continue going down um the only reason like i said why i actually ended up taking this trade was because thought there was uh, some manipulation going on in and around here uh, it turns out that um obviously the uh, the market was waiting for 
uh, some more central bank news in terms of uh, inflation which came out and inflation was still sticky but the big news really was uh, FOMC and so uh, with the projections that came out for FOMC and the dovish um, uh, Federal Reserve uh, that was the reason why prices really kind of went to the uh, to the upside um, because overall the uh, the bigger picture is that the Fed are looking to you know cut rates regardless of uh, what is happening uh, economically meaning that you know they do they shouldn't really uh, cut or look to cut rates when you have a you know a decent economy you would probably more likely to hold rates and inflation is coming back down to the two percent target but um, with the Fed being a bit dovish you know basically prices just pulled back and that was and that was that right so that was uh, one of the losses now let's go to the next trade which so far has been um, I mean uh, I'm in a break-even situation with a bit of profit, and that is the New Zealand dollar CAD. So the New Zealand CAD, uh, technically, um, we were at a really nice uh, area of uh, supply, and um, I wasn't necessarily looking at this uh, currency pair during the week, but there was some news that came out with regards to the New Zealand economy unexpectedly contracting in the third quarter. So revisions showed the uh, nation was in a recession earlier uh, this year and traders increased bets on Reserve Bank rate cuts in 2024. So there's that theme, right? And so um, because the... Uh, New Zealand economy unexpectedly contracted in the third quarter fueling bets that the central bank would start cutting interest rates. Um, uh, this it was on it was on actually the, the Thursday the uh, the fourteenth right that it happened I think it was overnight and so um, what I did was I saw a really nice entry around here uh, with. A, with a 15 pip stop I think I had something like that yeah it was about a 15 pip stop and so from an that was the entry there and on this occasion I did take uh, uh, partial profits uh, um, at break-even at a one-to-one -one. so put took 50% off and now it's uh, just a situation where now I can't lose on the trade if uh, basically prices pull back and stop me out somewhere up here, then um, I'm pretty much done at break even, right? So um, I'm looking for really prices to come down to at least a minimum of around uh, this low here where we've got uh, what's known as an unfair auction. Some traders will call it a fair value gap. It's actually known as an unfair auction, uh, but somewhere around these areas here, the 0 0.812, 0 0.813. So that's really what I'm looking for. So a decent risk reward uh, trade. And hopefully, you know, prices do roll over. We do have um, inflation rate year on year. And so if this does come out higher than expected, that would actually be positive for the Canadian dollar. And so I do think that prices may start to roll over as the market maybe prices out uh, sooner rate cuts for the Canadian economy. So uh, my, my really my thesis is if the um, New Zealand dollar economy is contracting or is contracted, what's gonna push prices really above here so the likelihood i'm not saying that it can't happen but the likelihood is less for it for the new zealand dollar to appreciate and so i think going into 2024 uh barring any again major uh downside news for the canadian dollar and upside news for the new zealand dollar prices should want to uh fall away now if for example the data comes out for the Canadian dollar and it's worse than expected let's say inflation comes out at 2.8 2.7 2.6 um, that's really going to um, push the expectation that the, the Bank of Canada are likely to cut rates sooner and so I'll probably just get out of this trade with a uh, with a small win 
Um, but let's see what happens. But those are really uh, the two trades, one winner, one loser. Um, of course, I can't go into the full strategy of what I do around here and full entries. Uh, that's really kind of reserved for the uh, the private members group, which opens up, by the way, in January 2024, early January, early to mid January. Um, I'll, I'll put the date out probably either uh, by the time you see this video or just check on the uh, Trading 180 website and uh, at some point this week and I will have uh, the uh, the opening dates for you in case you would like to join and learn more about how to apply fundamental analysis to your technicals. So guys, again, hope you have a great trading, um, well, I say trading week, uh, not really this week, but I hope you've had a great trading year. If not, don't worry. As long as you're still in the game and you haven't blown up your account, um, then, you're, then you're all right. And if you have blown up your account, don't worry. Um, just learn from risk management and uh, you know get back in the game and uh, in fact you might want to uh, give uh, my mentoring a go so uh, guys take care speak to you soon all the best stay blessed and uh, a merry christmas and a happy new year